and Russia come help Russia on the economic reforms. So I went back to Moscow to a dacha outside of Moscow, pretty run down dacha, by the way. It showed this was an empire at the bottom. Uh, and um, we worked on a strategy. And at that time in November, the G7 finance deputies had a mission led by David Mulford to come to Moscow. And Gaidar, I coached him, you have to ask for a debt standstill, financial help, this, 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 and this. And I remember he came out of the meeting looking terrible. And I said, what happened, Yegor? He said, not only did they say no help, but they said, if you don't pay every penny that's due, we will stop any help on the ocean, any food shipments, anything this moment. So he was given a complete hardline block. This was Russia, not the Soviet Union. This was Yeltsin coming to power in November 1991. Well, the reforms did not go well in Russia, let's say. I lasted two years. My role was to try to help get Western money. I think they saw me as the only chance to get some relief. And um, I delivered zero, nothing. And I couldn't understand it because in Poland, I was saying to the governor and the deputy governor, everything I said, they agreed to. And I kept saying, I'm so good. And then everything I said about Russia, they disagreed with. But it was the same thing and same advice. So it was geopolitics, which I didn't understand as a young person. I thought we were doing economics, not geopolitics. But they were playing geopolitics. I was playing economics. And so I was trying to give good economic advice. They were trying to basically make Russia subservient to a new unipolar American world. And I didn't understand it for a very long time. I resigned and was very unhappy and uh, went to work on many other things uh, with the UN and sustainable development and climate and other things that are really crucial. But till today, this geopolitical shadow also looms over the world. The US is an us versus them world. This is the mentality. We run the world, you're with us, or you're on the other side. And it's a very tough, wrong vision of the world because all of the real things that we need in this world need to be done collaboratively. They cannot be done under a Cold War. The, cold, the climate crisis, the broader environmental crises, the global social crises are not Cold War issues, they're global issues. And so we need a completely different mindset from the mindset that we're having right now. And the biggest problem we have, in my experience, is the U.S. mindset, which is that we're fighting a different battle. We're not fighting against climate change. We're not fighting uh, against poverty. We're fighting against an enemy. Today, the enemy is China, mainly, and Russia. But it's always someone on the other side. And this is what I grapple with every day as the, the biggest challenge that I face in the practical work that I'm trying to promote. So for 21, 22 years now, I've been advising the Secretary General of the UN, three Secretaries General, about the global scene and about the idea of sustainable development and sustainability. And sustainable development for me is a broader concept than environment. It's represented by both the sustainable development goals and the Paris Climate Agreement 
and the Convention on Biological Diversity is the three big headlines. But the idea is a world of shared economic prosperity, social inclusion, and reduced inequality, and environmental sustainability. And the environmental issues are three big issues. Uh, the human-induced climate change, the fragility and even collapse of many ecosystems, and the massive industrial pollution. Because all three are very much interrelated and all three have to be solved by new long-term transformations of industrial technology and power sector technology. So for me, the sustainable development challenge is that broad challenge. And we're setting lots of goals, but not achieving very many of them because the world is constantly distracted. And especially, you'd be interested to know the United States government, for example, as a government will not use the term sustainable development goals, even though every other country of the world does. There are five countries that have not had a voluntary national review of the sustainable development goals. The US, South Sudan, North Korea, and I don't recall the other two, but it's not great company, actually. Uh, so it's a real problem uh, that uh, we're fighting a cold war for global dominance. And at the same time, uh, what we really need is a global coordinated cooperative strategy to address these challenges. So let me come up to date on the macroeconomics being at the, your wonderful central bank and say a few words about the macro scene and how that fits into this broader challenge. Of course, we have stagflation because we've been hit by a series of supply shocks. The idea of, for me, the idea of stagflation from my dissertation in 1980 was supply shocks, uh, which is quite uh, um, seemingly pedestrian today. But I can tell you in 1980, the idea of supply shocks was not very much on the agenda because